Hey everybody, this is Kasu, and welcome to Animals of Atlas Part 2. This time, uh, it's going to be a way shorter video, but we're going to be going through four creatures, all aquatic, because previously, uh, I went through all of the land and air creature, and the remaining creatures are all aquatic, hence I split up into two videos. I could have split up, split them up better, but fuck it, I'm just going to roll with it. And yeah, today we're going to be going through all of the aquatic creatures. There are four aquatic creatures that I'll be going through. However, if I'm not wrong, one or two of them might not be spawnable and only admin spawnable. Hence, uh, it is only tameable via admin spawn. So without further ado, let's begin with the first one, the Leviathan. Le Le Leviathan. Le Le okay, this, this guy basically. So what is this guy? Well, let me read out the entire death notes for you guys okay the death note reads finally the leviathan can make it into the oceans of arc in reality the leviathan wasn't that massive estimates put it at about the size of a megalodon although they would also think it preyed on megalodons so not sure about that certainly in arc that would make it tiny so i've taken the creative license and made it roughly the size of a mosa although the mosa does triumph in girth and muscle so therefore, I may increase it further. My thinking with this monster is to make it into the aquatic red dino, a temporary tame, so, but one that will shred through alpha mosas and squids, ability to break structures, things like that. The sort of thing you tame to obliterate the sea caves of the island or get an enemy strike underwater installations, limited to a couple per map, tamed by severely weakening with ballista bolts, may combine the presence of this monster with a rework of lead sickness, taking the aggression towards Rust away from the big dumb fish and giving it to the actual whale instead. And uh, this particular creature is still under development. In the development mode, it also said that the things to do are rework the saddle so that it fits properly, increase the size and set up great dino mechanics, and taming mechanics and spawning mechanics, and rework all the other stats. So this creature is pretty temporary i would say i'm not sure whether this uh mod developer will actually you know make the make this creature into uh like basically change anything about this creature but only time will tell so first thing first let's look at his abilities currently my right, understanding it only has a single ability as it's a red dino so it's just a bite attack like so this uh bite attack is just like so like did 390 damage and stuff like that. I don't think it has any other abilities, but I do like the way it swims though, like that whole motion of it. And it swims pretty pretty damn fast too. So if any admin wants to any server admins wants to you know give this creature as a reward to any of your players, uh go ahead if you have this mod included. And yeah, that's it for the Leviathan, a upcoming creature that definitely people should be looking forward to. However, now it's just a temporary creature. Now, next up is this guy, the Maya Balena. The Maya Balena is also known as the Gender Whale in Animals of Atlas, and the developer, developer notes read as such. An early adopter of baleen for feeding, these gentle giants roam the oceans quite happily swallowing gallons of tiny things and generally being inoffensive. When I was looking into what kind of whale the gentle whale could become, I discovered whale lice that infest modern whales, and sort of become fixated on them and thus the lice have become integral to the taming and upkeep of the Maya Balina. And form a triumvirate of dependence between whale penguin and shark. Normal whale lice are mere few millimeters big, but I imagine the lice that infest Maya Valiana okay, to be massive in just long things that reproduce massively quick and can sustain small groups of sharks and penguins that follow their host wheel around like an ever moving buffet. Next, uh, the next part here is actually how to tame uh, the Maya Balina. In the wild, you can harvest lice from a living whale by swimming up to one and pressing E in the same manner as you would get fish from a lead sickness. However, each whale has a retu 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 ret retinue of sharks and penguins following it and living off of the lice that you are about to take. The way to tame a Maya Balina is to cure it of its infestation using Laos Antidote which is crafted in the inventory of penguins using lice, oil, biotoxin, a penguin egg, and citronelle. This is a variety of 
passive taming. You must have Lao's Antidote in your zero slot, harvest lives from the whale, and you will then have a 30 second window in which to administer the antidote. Beware though, as giving an antidote will attract sharks and make them come to protect the whale. Simply rinse and repeat until tamed. Tain Maya Balina Balena are great transport mounts. High health, massive weight, decent speed, and excellent stamina usage. They will also not be targeted by all but the largest marine predators, Megalodons and Arc. And any allied players or dinos that are close by them within about 5 foundations will also escape the attention of pesky jetties and mantas. Like their relatives, the Basilosaurus, they are immune to jelly and eel stings, cannot be grabbed by two souls, and will give an insulation buff to their rider. However, they are not fighters at all. They do very low damage with a very slow attack speed. You'll want to have bodyguards if you're going near anything that might want to attack them. Hammer hits, of course, are a natural bodyguard and will receive a small boost and damage resistance in the company of a Maya Balena. As filter feeders, Maya Balena have no food stat. They never need to be fed. However, just because you have to you have rid them of their life infestation once, the little bleeders can return and infect the whale again. When riding, you'll see the buff meter, a giga rich meter. Keep an eye on that because if it completely fills up, your whale will become feral. It will get set to aggressive and wandering. You will not be able to, uh, and you will be unable to be ridden. And will not obey orders until it gets treated once with a Laos antidote. It takes roughly 24 real time hours for an infestation to completely take over. So you need to treat your whale with antidote at least once a day. Either by having it in slot 0 and then selecting it from the original menu or by forcing it in the inventory. Note that if a whale does go feral, it will still respect any order following any following orders it already has. So if you don't think you're able to get uh, on, put it on follow something to stop it buggering off completely. Using cryo a cryopod or soul ball will not remove the infestation but obviously will stop it from getting worse with this they are balled up. Baby Maya Balena are especially susceptible to Laos infestation and will gain it at a rapid rate. However, keeping a tame hammerhead or two nearby your Mayas will have a benefit of slowing down the Laos infestation and keeping the hammerheads fed, increase hammerhead food and reduce uh, reduces the infestation per allied hammerhead with a 2000 radius of the Maya. It might seem easy to breed something that doesn't require food, but be warned, baby Mayas must be kept near an adult as they mature or they will rapidly lose health. And hammerheads will not keep down the rate of louse infestation of babies as they do adult. They trust the sharks, but maybe not quite that much. So yeah, that is the Maya Balena, a rather interesting creature to tame. Holy hell, what the heck? Let me just get rid of you. Okay. Yeah, a rather interesting creature to tame and that he does have a saddle as you can see right here hold on grab you and the saddle is created with fiber height and a metal ingot so yeah that is the the maya balena but i will show you how uh, a bit of a snippet on how the taming goes so currently i spawn uh, the whale louse antidote as said you can craft it in the penguins inventory where's my penguin uh right here Actually, that's a lie. I don't know why the penguin, you're not allowed, you can't really craft it in the penguin's inventory. You can craft polymers in the penguin's inventory. But to craft the Laos antidote, you have to craft it here. Right? Here. Yes. Real Laos antidote. Uh, as the thing, as the developer note said, you have to go through, rather, you have to use biotoxin, citronelle, oil, the penguin egg, and 10 real Laos. And with that, you are kind of set to go and tame your will. Okay, yeah, this is the more proper uh, example. As you can see, it's surrounded by hammerhead sharks, but I'm just going to ignore them. And if you go up to one, you can gather lice from it. And you can gather quite a number of lice from it, actually. As you can see, I got 57 lice from uh, Laos, lice, Laos from it. But once it's, uh, you know, it, once it's uh, kind of free from the Laos, you can go up to one and press E to give it the Laos treatment. And it's pretty easy to tame, I guess. You just have to get rid of all of these creatures nearby. 
and there is a timer unlike the other creatures uh, that, uh, uh, unlike the other creatures there is a timer on when you can gather the lice again and once you gather the lice again you can just you know you give it the louse the last treatment the last antidote one more time and you'll be able to tame it and yeah that's how you tame the maya balena and let's now go through its abilities but the abilities won't be something to look at because as the death note says it's not really a fighter but it is it has a very unique role in uh terms of buffing a the hammerhead shark which i'll be going through later so yeah so left click is a bite attack as you can tell in this one nibble on these fishes it doesn't do much it's legitimately like i think it does as much damage as a dodo bird so it's not really the strongest of yeah it's not really the strongest of uh, creatures but as the uh, death note says it has a particular synergy with the hammer hit shark which i'm gonna go through later however my thoughts on the my balena very unique actually because First of all, the taming is unique, and the way you, not only the way you tame it, but the way it interacts with a creature that is supposedly in the wild, uh, also is able, uh, you're also able to use that interaction inside your own team. Uh, what I mean is, for example, the Basilosaurus has a bunch of Manta Rays uh, following it, but in the original game, Basilosaurus and Manta Rays are two different creatures with no synergy with each other whatsoever. However, the Maya Bolena and the Hammerhead Shark does have this synergy and even when you tame it they you still have this synergy inside so yeah it's a really unique concept that i wish the game has more often where there's synergies between two creatures uh in a sense it's uh that it's that word of um living with each other like having a roommate that needs you and a, uh a, yeah, a roommate that needs you and a roommate that you need so yeah, that is the Amaya uh, Balena, a rather unique whale creature with a very unique way to tame it. Now, next up is this guy who is almost beached, the Hammerhead. So let me read off the uh, death notes. Vicious, deadly, ferocious pack hunters. The rest of the ocean is lucky that this particular species of shark has developed such a liking to the lice that infest the bodies of Maya Balena that they pretty much have no interest in anything other than defending their chosen will and dining all day on a mobile limitless feast. Hammerhead subsists entirely on whale lice, so to keep tame ones, you either have to have a tame Maya Balena or two around to harvest lice from, or be prepared to make regular trips into the ocean to harvest wild ones. On the upside, they get lots of food per louse and it is very good uh, for healing them. Hammerhead excel in groups. They receive a gang bonus of up to plus 8. Not only that, but every time a hammerhead kills something, it becomes frenzied, increasing its overall damage and giving it an extra measure of damage resistance. A hammerhead at full frenzy will have double damage output and receive a 33% damage reduction on top of its gang bonus. A show of hammerhead is no joke, but they have relatively low health making them somewhat glass cannon. They don't require saddles to be ridden and are able to use their inherently sharky hammerheadiness to detect nearby threats in poor visibility. A right click to give uh, ESP buff to riders for 30 seconds and with a 1 minute cooldown. Top tip! Hammerheads are great for hunting Lycotiotis, the well, another creature that I'll be going through later, for that sweet, sweet mollusk meat, as they can use their ESP to keep track of the fleeing tentacle boy through the inevitable inky discharge, and are immune to the squid, squid ink debuff. Keeping a tame hammerhead nearby to a tame Maya Balena will have benefits for both creatures, keeping the shark foods level up and the whale louse infestation down. So yeah, it is a pet creature that, honestly, I'm just gonna put it here for a bit looks really good like in terms of design right it looks really good as a ridges on his back the head looks like that it looks like it looks like an alien actually but yeah let's uh, take a look at his abilities so as i said there is a frenzy mechanic to it so i'm gonna eat th kill this where you can see from the right side there is a bar that is building up and as the bar builds up can see that i'm doing more like kind of more damage just kill more 
Yeah, there we go. See, it's getting more and more. And now we have frenzied state. Uh, I am doing two times my damage, which is now two hundred. And I'm not sure when it resets though. It it doesn't really say when it will reset. And right click is uh something like a search, I guess. Yeah, something like a search. Oh yeah, this creature is actually really really unique in terms of how it works because it is a pet creature that will gain extra buffs as it kills. So it's you can think of it as like the Carcharodontosaurus Light, where once it reaches maximum, it will have increased damage reduction and also increased damage. And also it has a pack buff, so naturally the the more sharks you have, the lesser damage you do. And obviously the best part is, if you keep them near the Maya Valena, you'll get this buff at the top, which I'm gonna get rid of this thing for a moment. You know. And also just to show you how much uh, one will loss will give it, Okay, it's not that much, I thought it would be more than that, but oh well. So, once uh, near the Maya Balena, you have this, Shrouded. You are protected from the attention of... Oh, okay. Sorry, this is the Maya Balena's own buff. So, it's not a buff unique to them, it's a buff that both uh, any other creature will have if they're near the Maya Balena. So, yeah, this is the uh, second part of the synergy between two creatures, the Hammerhead with the Maya Balena. Honestly, again, I really like the fact that they are... There's a synergy between two creatures. I always like the fact that two creatures can interact with each other in a unique manner. So uh, this has a thumbs up. This gets a thumbs up from me. Now on to the last creature, the Lycotheotis. The Lycotheotis, uh, the developer of Reed says, Little squids for the win. Although, of course, in this case, little means not 10 million foot long. Although in real life, Lycotheotis are teeny tiny bioluminescent snail. This is Arcmophos, so they are roughly about the size of uh, that the actual in real life Tusotheotis would have been. That means that the Arc's giant squid is a bit too giant. And this is the accurate representation of it. They are very pretty, nice and glowy, can be ridden without a saddle, and essentially, when tamed, are just small Tusos. Approximately one quarter the everything when compared to a Tuso. They can be ridden without a saddle, although one is available, making them rather squishy but make up for it with bursts of speed after inking. They can of course grab other creatures, anything smaller than a Megalodon. And just like the Tuso, will, they will inflict topper when carrying and drain their victim's health. Unlike the Tuso, however, you'll find these beauties swimming around the surface and they are very very skittish. They will ink and flee pretty much as soon as they take damage. And also, unlike the Tuso, they are knockout teams. Prepare to chase them though. They have a quite low topper and it drops very quickly, just like their big cousin. They prefer black pearls as their favorite taming food. So, why are they such wusses? Well, quite frankly, everything thinks they're delicious. And they know it. Harvesting a Lyco will give delicious raw mollusk meat. Pescovos absolutely loves them. Basically, it is fish it is to fish meters a, as muttons to it is to meat eaters, providing more than doubling the taming effectiveness of raw prime fish meat. So yeah, this particular creature is a knockout tame, and if even though you can ride it without a saddle, it does have a saddle which you can create using summoning paste for hyper height and metal ingot. Let's take a look at its abilities. So a uh, left click is the tentacle tickle like the you know like i'm gonna go up to a fish and try out like this particular salmon here like tickle tickle like come on come on stay still so i can try it tickle tick yep there you go tickle tickle right click is a grab not sure whether it can grab okay it can grab I can't grab alcoholic creatures, but it did interact with it. And pressing space bar while facing one direction makes you switch to a the 180 opposite direction immediately. C key basically has the uh, ink like the ink splat attack, where you have increased movement speed like crazy, like so. Holy shit! Like look at how fast you're swimming. 
but this only lasts for around 10 seconds from what I saw. Um, not sure how long the cooldown is. Or there's no cooldown at all because you can just keep using it uh, once the timer ends. So it is a very fast creature to ride on. Much more useful than uh, the Ovis because the Ovis only job is to become a farm animal and die. But uh, most importantly, once you kill it, hold on a second. But once you kill it, it will drop raw mollusk meat in the huge quantity batch actually. Holy shit, look at that, how much that is. And as said in the developer notes, the raw mollusk meat is very, very good for taming aquatic creatures, as it is the mutton of the sea, so to speak. And with the raw mollusk meat, you also can craft this, the fish pie, which requires the raw mollusk meat, and also all the other stuff that is from the original game or the uh, mod itself. And yeah, that's it. That's all of the creatures that uh, I have today, actually. Like I said, I went through the Animals of Atlas uh, in the previous week. I'm going to put a link at the end of this video here uh, later if you want to take a look. However, uh, now I'm, just going to, I'm only going through the aquatic creatures and there's only four. And with that, we have come to the end of Animals of Atlas as a whole. Honestly, this, this particular mod, I'm quite happy with because there's quite a lot of creatures that like are very unique i'm not talking about the leviathan because leviathan is not as of yet implemented in the game but the interaction between the hammerhead and the maya balena and also the fact that they add a squid that is able to run really fast but also uh, make it into a useful resource farm is also very interesting and as a whole it all of these creatures uh feels like it they may actually fit into up as well well i mean then again they are you know animal atlas is a game is a something like a sister game to arc so it, maybe it does fit well anyway so with that being said i have come to the end of the animals of atlas part 2 and animals of atlas as a whole thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see all of you in the next video or stream soon anyways say bye now say bye come okay that's just you chomping but yeah bye